All right, students, so we're going to be reading a text called Music for My Mother. It is a work of narrative nonfiction. And essentially all that means is that it is an informational text, so it's true events, that is told as a story. So how do you know if something is a story? It has characters, setting, details, description, and essentially a plot, so sequence and events. All right, so we are gonna read this together and I will annotate as I go, just so y'all can sort of get a feel for what this text is all about. All right, so after dinner, my older brother liked to play guitar. He preferred the music he heard on the radio, but he played the traditional songs for mama. She enjoyed things that reminded her of home. I think it's important that he's playing traditional songs. So I'm going to highlight that. And then also, I think it's interesting that something is reminding her of home. So I want to make a note, reminding her of home, question mark. Are they not home? Maybe they are from another place. Or country. Her eyes hurt and her fingers would get sore from long hours of work as a seamstress. If you don't know, a seamstress makes and sews clothes. I remember washing dishes while Pedrito sang. And seeing myself so lonely and like a sad leaf in the wind, I want to cry from this feeling. Pedrito, the name Pedrito makes me think the family might be from Mexico or another Spanish speaking country. You see how I'm just giving my notes in the side. He sang in Spanish, which is how the lyrics were written. That song is more than a hundred years old now. Mama learned it when she was a little girl. He's probably extremely nostalgic about that song. Makes her feel good to think about her past, kind of miss it a little bit. <clears throat> Papa tried to nudge Mama out of her nostalgia sometimes. He would answer her in English when she spoke to him in Spanish. His English was not good at first, but he worked at it until he got better. This is interesting because you read a little bit about the dad. So the father, dad wants to speak in English. Why? Possibly because he feels they are in America. They should speak English. Maybe he had bad experiences. Oh, can I spell? Experiences in his home country. Let's keep going. Mama usually answered him in Spanish. They would go back and forth in either language, talking about work or homesickness or family. Pedrito and I would occasionally correct them or help them finish their sentences in English. Papa would thank us. Mama would just smile and shake her head, but she always repeated the words we'd helped her with. In time, her English got better too, but she was far more at ease with her native tongue. So we have here is in contrast to the father, the mother wants to speak Spanish. Why? Maybe so simply 
because that is her language, what she grew up with. <clears throat> and then it's interesting because the two children here, Pedrito and the narrator, they have learned to speak early on. So the children have learned and are helping the parents learn English. The kids might have learned English quickly because they were born there. I think think immersion i was seven years old when we came to the united states pedrito was 11. papa was a carpenter that also knew a little bit about plumbing and electricity from an early age my brother and i learned how to take care of ourselves in a new home our parents worked long hours and they counted on us to be independent I think most likely lots of y'all have experienced this, right? So this is something we can relate to. The need for independence. God is not how you spell that, y'all. Independent, you know. I can't type when y'all are watching me. All right, so let's keep checking. At first, we were almost like guides for Mama and Papa. It was a busy place. In busy places, like the mall or the registry for motor vehicles, they felt uncomfortable, if not overwhelmed. It was easier to adjust to environments that were fast-paced and not always friendly. I felt protective of my parents, but also of, proud of how quickly I learned my way around. This paragraph really shows how flipped the relationship between children and parents are. The children are the ones protective of their parents because the kids have learned quickly what to do and how to be, whereas the parents are still acting like they're at home, in a way. <laughs> Y'all, this is sort of the thought process I have when I'm reading. It takes, it's kind of long-winded, but it's just close reading. All right, so it would hurt my feelings to see the way some people looked at us. For a while on Sundays and holidays, we would wear our best clothes from home. Before long though, we learned to wear casual clothes almost all the time, like most people in this country do. And after a while, our parents became less at ease, became more at ease in stores and government offices. They relaxed a little, and I suppose we attracted less attention. So all this is showing is that things are different here, and that, that makes them sort of stick out. Mama and Papa live with Pedrito now in a two-family house outside Houston. Pedrito is known as Peter. He runs a construction business that employs 14 men and four women. I think it's interesting that Pedrito now goes by Peter. And I think that's interesting because he has, in a way, adapted and assimilated to, to an English name. He has adapted to an English Americanized name. 
And in a way, I kind of wonder if that was a good choice and the reasoning behind it. But obviously, we don't get that from this text. Papa is in his 70s now. Pedrito would like for him to slow down a little and enjoy retirement. But Papa says that Mama wouldn't want him sitting around the house getting in her way. He rises in, at dawn almost every day and goes to work with Pedrito. I am a teacher. This summer, I will be taking my son Michael to visit his grandparents. He's 12. He wants to learn to play the guitar. I want Mama and his Uncle Peter to teach him a few of the good old songs. So we're going right back to the very beginning of the story. We go full circle back to that good old song at the beginning. And seeing myself so lonely, lonely and sad, like a leaf in the wind, I want to cry from this feeling. So this story, this story that we have just read, that we have torn apart, we have close read, it is all about a family. So if you want to sum it up, if you wanted to come up with a theme, for example, we could go so simple as family. I know there's lots of variations. We could do even more. But I want to, for now, just say family. That's what it's all about. And it talks about how this family has learned to assimilate into American culture. And it's pretty provocative when you think about it, how they had to assimilate into culture. And that is exactly what we're peeling into as we read our text in American Voices. All right. Have a great evening, y'all. See you soon.